Okay, seventh grade, welcome back. Hope you guys are doing well. We're looking today, continuing on chapter 16 on uh, slavery and the period 1820 to 1861. We're up to the emergence of the Republican Party. If you look at the title of this uh, reading, the Republican Party emerges. And this is chapter 16, section four. We are going to be looking at some important events and some important individuals in the emergence of the Republican Party. The Republican Party has become known uh, as the Party of Lincoln. And uh, that refers to our 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. A lot to talk about today on this topic. As usual, this screencast, this uh, mini lecture will be posted on your Schoology page and you'll be able to review it and uh, uh, refer to it again if you need to, along with uh, the Quizlet deck for chapter 16 for there are four very important vocab terms. All of them appear on this sheet. All of them will also appear on your Quizlet deck, which I will link to Schoology as well. And there will be some very, very important uh, videos that connect with this lesson that you'll need to watch on your Schoology feed as well. So with, uh, with no further waiting, let's get right into Chapter 16, Section 4, The Republican Party Emerges. We've got four vocab terms that we'll need to look at here. First, the Republican Party was a new political party formed in 1854, and it was made up of members of the Free Soiler Party, Northern Democrats, and anti-slavery Whigs. It is a brand spanking new Republican Party that will be created in 1854. Second word is arsenal a place for storing weapons. We've seen this word before earlier in the year when we looked at the uh, British marching uh, out of Boston to find uh, ammunitions and uh, weapons that the militia were, uh, the colonial militia were, were hiding. They were looking to find their arsenal of weapons. So an arsenal is a place for storing weapons. Treason is another term that we'll need to know uh, for this section. Treason is an act against one's country. And martyr is the fourth word today. Martyr is a person who gives up their life for their beliefs. Uh, some very important martyrs that we've talked about this year in class. Um, historical martyrs, not so much uh, martyrs connected to our study of the colonial era and the revolution and uh, the Civil War, but uh, historical martyrs nonetheless, Jesus Christ, Martin Luther King, uh, Joan of Arc, okay, anyone who dies for their beliefs, anyone who is willing to die for their beliefs is called a martyr. And we're going to look at a very important martyr in this section as well. So let's get right to the reading. In 1854, the Republican Party came into being. The party was formed because the Whig Party and the Democratic Party would not take a strong stand against slavery. Neither one of those political parties, the two major parties of the time, the Whig Party or the Democratic Party, neither of them really would take a strong stand against slavery. And members of each of those parties who were anti-slavery, okay, anti-slavery members of the Whigs and the Democrats, along with Free Soilers, we talked about the creation of the Free Soiler Party uh, a couple of uh, lessons ago. All these individuals um, would come from uh, these three political parties, the Free Soil Party, the Democratic Party, and the Whig Party, and they would create the uh, Republican Party. In 1858, four years later, Republican Abraham Lincoln ran for the Senate in Illinois as a Republican. He and his opponent, Stephen Douglas, Senator Stephen Douglas, held a series of famous debate, uh, debates, and we'll look at the chart in a moment on that. The main issue in these Lincoln-Douglas debates was slavery. Lincoln believed that slavery was a moral, social, and political wrong. Lincoln lost the election in 1858 for the Senate, but became nationally known during the campaign. Also re-emerging on the scene in the late 1850s, in 1858, is this gentleman, John Brown. 
an abolitionist who had fought in Kansas. He wanted to start, he was part of uh, the Bleeding Kansas that we talked about uh, in an earlier lesson, uh, 16.3. Uh, John Brown wanted to start an armed revolt against slavery. So in 1859, he is back east. And in uh, 1859, Brown will lead a raid on an arsenal in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. He'd hoped to get guns from the arsenal. And the plan was uh, for John Brown, who, as we know, was a very uh, religious man. He claimed to have heard uh, God speak to him and told him, uh, John Brown claimed that God told him to do this. John Brown's plan was to attack this arsenal, this United States arsenal, and hand out guns, ammunition, and weapons to slaves, and in effect, lead a slave revolt across the American South. And uh, he hoped to get guns from the arsenal and planned to give them to enslaved African Americans and lead them in a revolt. Brown was caught and sentenced to death for treason. Now, what's important about John Brown was that John Brown um, was viewed by Southerners, okay, as a Northern abolitionist. He was viewed by Southerners as someone who deserved to be executed for attempting what he attempted by arming slaves. Northerners were impressed, on the other hand, by the dignity he showed at his trial. Now, not all abolitionists supported John Brown's uh, violent attempt to uh, overthrow slavery. Matter of fact, uh, Frederick Douglass was approached by John Brown and asked to participate. And Frederick Douglass, who we know was an escaped slave and a, a very, very important abolitionist, John Brown was told by Frederick Douglass that he was wrong to, uh, to go about trying to end slavery this way. John uh, Brown, he said, uh, Douglass said, was, uh, was doomed to fail. Uh, but Northerners, for the most part, even those who did not support the violent means that he used, Northerners were impressed by his dignity he showed at his trial. And then the day of his death, church bells rang in the North uh, to commemorate, to honor John Brown for his stand that he took, basically making himself a martyr, knowing full well that if he was caught and he was convicted, he mo would most certainly be executed for treason. On the day of his death, in his honor, church bells rang in the North. On the other hand, in the South, people were outraged that a man who tried to lead a slave revolt could be considered a martyr and a hero in the North. Again, John Brown's raid at Harper's Ferry. Again, 1859, late 1859, Brown's execution takes place a few weeks before Christmas in 1859. It's just another uh, event that will lead to anger and suspicion and uh, mistrust between Northerners and Southerners uh, on the issue of slavery. Let's look at our chart here at the bottom of the reading on the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Again, named after uh, Abraham Lincoln, who was running for senator uh, as a Republican in 1858 against the incumbent uh, Stephen Douglas. And the Lincoln-Douglas debates consisted of debates, open debates between these two men on the following issues. Slavery uh, was the, the primary issue that separated the two candidates in the election in 1858. And uh, to kind of give you an idea where each man stood on the issue of slavery in Illinois in 1858, Lincoln believed slavery to be morally wrong. Lincoln was not, very important point here, ladies and gentlemen, in 1858 while running for the Senate, Lincoln believed slavery was wrong. He believed it was immoral. He was not calling for an abolition of slavery. He was, however, calling for slavery to be, uh, to be reined in and to stop slavery from spreading into Western territories. And there is a difference. Lincoln was not calling in 1858 for slavery to be abolished nationwide. He was only calling for it to be uh, to stop moving into new American Western territories. And finally, Lincoln said in 1858 that he would not do anything to interfere with slavery in the South. 
Okay. Stephen Douglas, on the other hand, uh, in 1858, while running uh, for United States Senate, Douglas disliked slavery. However, he would allow popular sovereignty. He would allow the people to decide in those Western territories if slavery would be allowed or not. He was not willing to take a stand uh, about addressing the uh, restriction on slavery in Western territories. He would leave it up to the people. And also, Douglas said he would not interfere with slavery in the South as well. So your two questions on 16-4 worksheet, okay, your two questions are going to be the following. Um, based on the reading, uh, who formed the Republican Party and why? And the chart question asks you, referring to the chart clearly above, compare the views of Douglas and Lincoln on the issue of slavery. Please answer these questions in Google in a Google Doc and share them with me. Also, please don't forget to make sure that you study your vocab for 16.4 and also watch the supporting videos that go along with this particular lesson. There's some real important videos on John Brown and the attack on Harper's Ferry, and there's a video that you'll need to watch on the Republican Party. Um, we will finish Chapter 16.5 at a class uh, some point uh, very, very shortly in the future. And that section will address the events that immediately lead to the start of the Civil War.